I'm going to give you some concrete tips on how to reduce your biases, use objective reality to your advantage in your relationships and action things in a positive and meaningful way. So you get what you want in your relationships. We'll talk specifically about relationship problems today, but this does translate to other things. But a lot of times the problem is you and you, your perceptions or the problem is your partner and her perceptions, right? And there's nothing else that's fundamentally different or wrong about her or about you. It's simply your biases and your perceptions that are putting you in a different place. Okay, so I'll give an example of this. And I'm going to talk about how the girl does it because women are very susceptible to doing this because they're more emotionally driven with their decisions. And to them, their emotions are correct. Their, their emotions are always the truth. And objective truth, that's, that gets in, that's in the back seat. Okay, compared to what's driving them, which is the emotions. The objective truth is always filtered through that driver for a woman, which is her emotions. But you guys, too, can also get caught up in this. Because you could take up, you could take something, a fact, and you could look at that fact in a particular way that could be extremely negative, extremely harmful, and that would prevent you from having the success into your goals or into what you would want. Or you could take that same fact and you could figure out how can I use this? What actions can I take? How could I use this fact to get what you want and to have what you want and happiness? I'm going to give you some concrete tips on how to reduce your biases, use objective reality to your advantage in your relationships and action things in a positive and meaningful way so you get what you want in your relationships. And that goes the same too for your partner, right? Your relationship partner needs to be getting what she wants or she's not going to want to stick around. And so this is a way you both can come together and do that and not let your biases and your perceptions ruin you, okay? But you can let those things help you. And we'll talk about that at the end. So this is related to any kind of bias, because what's a one-itis? One-itis is a bias, isn't it? One-itis is a confirmation bias that is positive and excessively positive about your partner. What happens is you see the good parts about your partner, about this person that she presents and you focus and you get hyper-focused on the good parts and you ignore maybe some red flags, ignore the bad parts, or you just fail to be open to the ideas and the realities that she is going to have faults too. And she is going to have some problems, right? And also not being open to the idea or the reality that she may not have those same emotions for you. In that moment, usually for a guy, if a guy, most guys, I'm not talking about my audience specifically, so a lot of you guys will be like, that's not me, okay? But um, but some of you guys though, that is guys in general, okay? A lot of guys especially that don't listen to this content, they tend to fall fall for that girl that they really like and have the emotions for her before she has the emotions for him.
men and women love differently. And men are actually the ones who tend to be idealistic because they're in, or women tend to be pragmatic. And this vets itself out through evolutionary psychology because women were not the dominant sex and were generally reliant on men for resources. Now, though that may not be true today, that's still a fact of our evolution. We have not had enough time to adapt to something different. So although the woman may be able to make her own living and have her own resources, she still wants to think pragmatically before she releases her emotions to the guy. All right. And so that's kind of what happens is unless she has psychological difficulty, maybe attachment problems or, you know, even getting into like personality disorder kinds of things, she's usually not head over heels in love right away. That's actually a bad sign. If a woman's not trying, I mean, she could be maximum genuine burning desire, sleep with you right away, demonstrating some of those things. But what you should see is her demonstrating some level of restraint with her emotion, or at least attempting to. She's going, a healthy woman is going to try not to be head over heels on you on the first couple dates. She's going to want to protect herself from that stuff because they're a healthy woman with healthy attachment styles is going to have a bit of a protective nature over a guy that she doesn't know very well. Um, a woman who's healthy can also delay gratification. So she's going to want to make sure that you're a safe and good partner for her before she takes next steps, you know? And so that's a lot of you guys aren't used to healthy women. You're used to very toxic women. And so you're used to women who are just playing games or, you know, their genuine burning desire to you is the BPD girl love bombing the shit out of you in a first week or two of a relationship for some of you guys. And, and that's none of that stuff is healthy. Okay. It, it, it picks up and gradually comes along, but a guy can tend to get a bit more head over in the beginning than a girl. Uh, because guys will start to idealize her and start to see her as better than she is, really. And, and in theory, she's doing that to you, but she's showing a little bit more restraint and she's being pragmatic about it. She's trying to, to, to see if this is really a good situation for her moving forward. And she she's pretty good at not allowing her emotions to just, you know, run wild, if you will, until she's met some standards for herself. You know, she's vetted things out. Now, some of that she'll just rationalize and it's, you know, the caffeinated uh, hamster running around in her brain, just you, you justifying her stuff. But it's still pragmatic. At least she's attempting to be all the same. All right. Uh, most women are not particularly good at vetting partners, but they their attempt at least as, prag as pragmatic as can be versus guys. Guys tend to fall head in and, and they do that again because of their biases. The girl is no different uh, really, although people change over time all the time and you should change over time, but chances are the girl is not any different on your first few dates and the first time you have sex with her versus six months, you know, eight months later. She's probably not much different, but you'll see her differently, right? You'll see more of her, but chances are you're actually going to see her characteristics that you ignored, okay? So you're going to see the things that are imperfections later, and she's going to see those about you. And when those are in full force and you have more of a clear picture of your partner, that's usually when that honeymoon phase is over and now you get into what's been called more of a challenge phase which is now it's like okay i see the person's faults and i'm no longer idealizing them so can i really you know is this still good for me am i still excited to be with this person and there's usually a lot of arguments and fights and things that'll happen during the challenge phase your instinct to run away from a girl who, you know, treated her V spot like trash, right? 
is pretty um it's it's an accurate instinct in a sense at least it was at one time because it, so there's going to be a drive there is going to be a turn off women don't understand this because women are turned on by men who can get women and who've had sexual experiences with women to a degree of course you know um but I mean, if the guy is just out there banging anything on two legs, that's not attractive to her necessarily. But um, if he is able to get good looking, higher, higher value, higher sexual market value women, and he's had that frequently, that's actually attractive to a woman. And what women don't understand is they have no concept of how unattractive that is to a man. And they don't have a concept. All they can do is understand it on a logical level if they choose to get out of their own biases <laughs> and see things objectively. Um, even guys who lie to themselves and say that it doesn't matter, or they say, um, Oh, what's good. She's sexually experienced. That's fine. For any kind of long-term mating, LTR, marriage, relationship, anything like that, a girl with a lot of notches, in a lot of, you know, pump and dump scenarios is highly unattractive to most. I mean, I'll say all men on an instinctual level. And this is not, this is just some things from evolutionary psychology. Don't blame me, blame the, blame your genetics. Okay. But this is the way that is. And the reason that is, is because if a girl's had a lot of experiences that demonstrates that she's most likely not going to be capable of valuing you and protecting your paternity. Meaning if she, a better deal is somewhere else, or if she's bored with you, she'll leave the kids in the woods to die and go run off with the other tribe. Okay. Which is a real thing. And so, or she's going to cuck you and she, you're here, find yourself putting your resources to, you know, the neighbor's kid. Okay. Um, and this is, this is just how we evolved. These things happened and that's a big risk to a guy's paternity and his genetics traveling into the next generation. So a guy sees a woman who is that way and not selective and treats herself like trash in a sense, she thinks she's being strong and independent and that she's getting, you know, she's making herself valuable and having fun. And I, you know, I'm out here having fun and I'm at the, you know, I'm, you know, I'm banging this guy after work. Blah. You know, she thinks she's living her best life, girl. But the reality is she is disgusting to men who have options. Um, and so she puts herself in a spot where a man has to overlook that to want to be with her long term. And that's the question of why should he? Now, there's a tons of reasons why he might want to. OK, there's a lot of women out there who have made mistakes, done the whole face things, didn't destroy their ability to pair pair bond. And when I say pair bonding, I don't mean just one person. Um, pair bonding is a term. It's kind of a misnomer, but it means that you have bonding neurochemical bonding mechanisms with a particular partner. OK, and for as long as that partner is there, it doesn't mean you mate mate for life and you're, you know, some fictitious uh, example of penguins. All right. Just to be clear on that. So when I say pair bonding, I mean, your neurochemicals are fired or bonded and you have a neural association to a particular person for the stimulus of sexual pleasure and uh, those love feelings or emotions. OK, and so a girl has a capacity to do that. It's in part of our wiring, but she's also has a capacity to mate switch quickly and, and break that or not have that. If she, if she does that and practices mate switching and easy, quick, non-committed sex with dudes and all that stuff, she's practicing breaking that bond. Okay. On a neural level. And so that means that she is less likely going to, to be capable of being a good long-term mate for you. But that's not the only data point either. And so it's just something to be aware of in the dating phase. And then how do you get past it? Well, this again has to do with your biases. Are you going to use your biases to your advantage or are you going to use it to your detriment? 
you could be leaving a very good option on the curb because she made bad choices and was a human being once in her life. And you don't want to get caught up in that either. You don't want to harm yourself by getting into it with the wrong woman, but you don't want to harm yourself by kicking girls to the curb who are really good potential options because they made some shitty bad decisions. And I'm sure you wouldn't want to be kicked to the curb either for your bad decisions. I mean, remember this, you know, you're both the good, the bad, the hero, the villain, the nobody, the somebody in everybody else's story. At one time, you're the bad, you're the villain in someone's story and you may have earned it. You're one time you were, you know, the, the ugly person in somebody else's story. Okay. Every single one of you listening. So that's part of being human being and being flawed. And of course you don't want to be that person. Right. But y'all have been at least once. And so she, you've made mistakes. Keep that in mind. When you judge other people, you want to look at their current abilities based on their current behavior and you use the past experiences and knowledge and knowledge as a data point. You don't want to necessarily use that information so you can be judge and jury and sentencing person or whatever in your head, right? Where you're tallying up her mistakes or tallying up her wrongdoings or flaws and then looking for a reason to kick her to the curb. And she is going to want to do that to you at some point, probably. And a lot of women do. And that's not something you're going to want to have done to you either. So let's look at a few biases. All right. Let's look and let's go to go travel through an example. Okay. Let's look at what the chicks might do. Okay. So chick hooks up with you and you do all the right stuff. You're in my seduction course. You're in my seduction, shameless plug. You're in my seduction mastermind program. And so you, you get her really excited to be with you in the beginning. All right. Now, nobody is handing somebody a resume of all of their, you know, it's not, you don't hand somebody a Carfax of your life and they don't hand you that either when you first start seeing them. So you don't see their flaws. They don't see your flaws. And if you're doing seduction properly, you're just having a great time. Right. And you're just being together. And by in a state of being without any of the other BS, okay, your flaws, your past, you know, the, your, your, your quirks, her quirks, with all that stuff, you're just being in the, in the process of being, she is excited and she starts idealizing you, right? Her, her sexual excitement, her genuine burning desire, well, that causes her to put you on a level. And then your quirks, mistakes, small failures, things like that, well, those get rationalized away, right? This is what she, she does. This is what you do too, but this is definitely what she does. And this is called a positive confirmation bias. She sees the good in you and she conveniently ignores the, the flaw. Well, I won't say the bad, but I'll say the flaws, the flawed. If a red flag happens that makes her think that she, she, she's in trouble with you, like in other words, there's a danger to her, well, then that may change her bias. But most things aren't that, that most things can be worked with and most things are quirks or flaws, right? We're all flawed in some ways. And so she overlooks those. She's not hypercritical about them because she's genuine burning desire for you. Assuming that's the case. Now in transactional beta relationships, she starts off hypercritical. Why does she do that? Because she is weighing out on a pro con list, whether she should be with you or not. It's not based on genuine desire. It's based on basically a Ben Franklin list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so 
that's how transactional relationships work. And then she is going to figure out how she can get the best deal in the transaction with you. It's the lowest form of a relationship. And I, I don't recommend you get into a relationship like that, even though most men do, and most men have never experienced anything different. I don't recommend you give your commitment away to someone who is looking at a checklist and weighing you as an option based on that list. And you'll be able to tell she's weighing out. And, and some women just do this as the default. And that is their bias, their way of operating. They'll ignore or suppress genuine desire in order to push things into transactional. You see this, unfortunately, this is age related to, you'll see this with women who are a little bit older, late thirties, forties, and so on. They feel like they don't have any time left. They've made a series of mistakes. And so now this is their attempt to be mature and practical. Unfortunately, they're ruining desire, not just for themselves, but for their partner. And if they end up in a relationship, it ends up being practical rather than exciting. And women don't really want practical to settle with. They want practical and exciting. They want everything. What does a woman want? She wants it all. All right. And, and you know what? I'm not mad at her for it. There's nothing wrong with that. That is the, that is the truth. And so at any rate, you know, let's pretend though it's not transactional and it's starts off good. She wants to have tons of sex with you. She's super excited. She's a positive confirmation bias. Okay. Well, some other things may happen later. Okay. You're going to make mistakes you're going to do some beta things. You're going to do a little beta things. It's going to happen. You're going to have a beta thing you do here and there. All right. It's going to shit test you. You're going to fail those. You'll pass some, you'll fail some. You're going to be, you know, an, an asshole sometimes. All right. You're, you're going to, you're going to be like trying to be, you're almost too alpha. Now you're beta yesterday. Now you're too alpha. All right. And now she sees you as a prick. And her, she's got too much anxiety and tension about being able to keep going with you with that. And so on and so forth. And then there's little annoyances. Maybe you're a little messy. Maybe you don't put something away that you should. You know, maybe you don't, you're not as conscientious at certain times that you should be. And you're going to notice her stuff too, but that's another, th another thing. And so what happens? These things start adding up. And as they add up, well, Zygarnik effect. Okay. So there, that's the effect. Okay. That's the effect. And what that effect is, is that um, people remember incomplete tasks. Um, they tend to remember the things that aren't complete or unfinished over the complete ones. It's another sort of bias, right? And this is where guys with the perfectionist dilemma, which I've been guilty of this myself, is you accomplish so much, you do so much, but you forget. You, you end up focusing on the things that you've left undone. You know, that's what is in your mind in the forefront is the things you missed, the things you haven't done yet. Yet, you know, it's, um, you've, here you are, you've accomplished all these other things, right? You're being too hard on yourself, maybe. But that's that effect. And so that effect comes in in the relationship. So let's say there's an issue, something that bothers her. And it's not really resolved, maybe. And that unresolved issue then weighs on her mind because she ignores all of the things that you are to her that nobody else has ever been. She ignores how you are with, with her when you guys are just being together. And she's focused on an issue. And that makes her be in a bad emotional state. Maybe she focuses on a thing you've done or not done, a promise. She, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of that, honey. And then you don't take care of it. Happens to the best of us. We have good intentions, and sometimes we fall short of those things. We do it to ourselves. Why wouldn't we do it to our partner? Yet the Zygarnik effect takes, <laughs> takes effect, and uh, what happens is she focuses on the things you didn't do, and she doesn't appreciate the things you did do. And then let's say you do something or there's an actual offense, or maybe it's just a series of things that aren't real offenses, but just her perceptions. And now she's in a negative confirmation bias. 
And then it doesn't matter what you do at that point, does it? Everything you do is seen through a negative bias. Things you do right are ignored. Things that you do right are twisted in her mind to be seen as wrong. Things that you do wrong are magnified. Things that you do that are neutral, those are seen as wrong too. Most things are neutral, right? They're not necessarily right or wrong. And so this continues until finally she can't take it anymore. And she looks at you in disgust because she's emotional and she's in the moment. So this guy that was, you once were to her, everything you were to her, okay? Apex guy that she saw this massive future with, she now looks at you with disgust. And it's called negative confirmation bias. There's nothing you can do, right? And it seems very reasonable to her for her to think this way because, you know, maybe you did something wrong. And that means that her thoughts here, they're definitely correct. You know, and then you say you get find yourself getting caught up in trying to correct this bias. Where guy, this is where guys will get caught up in trying to explain things or trying to get her to see you in a different way. Like, because it's not logical, is it? This is where you all make the mistake. All right. So she breaks up with you. That's what happens. Okay, All right. And then what happens, guys? You can say so in the chat. What happens a few months later, six months later, year, year and a half later? What happens 90% of the time after a girl breaks up with you? You got it, man. All right. You guys understand now. Why? Why, why does she do that? Why didn't she stay with you and work through the relationship? Why did she run off and do that? Well, we, we know the answers of she thought there's a better deal out there. She just, but it's her emotions and her negative bias as it pertains to the topic. Cause there's a lot of reasons why she might do that. But as it pertains to the topic, she had a negative bias and you're not, I mean, hopefully you're better and you're always getting better year after year, month after month. But what would have been the difference between her staying with you and letting you get better and not destroying her chances? Right? Because obviously when she's reaching out later, she is maybe thinking, I don't know if that was the best choice. Maybe I'm starting to question her decision there. When we have something called what's called fading effect bias, which is the effects of the past, the negative effects start to go away and you start to remember the positive. So it puts you back in a positive confirmation bias. So she or she painted you as the villain in her story, as the devil. And there's nothing you could do that was right. And then what happens? She reaches back out because now she's back into a, a positive confirmation bias. She may have had to bang a few losers to get there, have a few things happen. But now she's back and she says, man, I'm here now. Hey. But here's the problem with, with women that do this. It's a problem with you guys too, by the way. If you if you get caught up in this, it's, anyone can do this, but women tend to do this more because they're more emotional and they want to stomp up and down like children and say, I'm logical, I'm smart. 
and they may be very smart. You may have a very smart woman, but if she's dealing with, if she is stuck in her biases and refuses to recognize it, she's very stupid. And same with you too, by the way. And we see it all the time in what kinds of discussions, political ones, religious ones, things where somebody's identities and fears get affected, their emotions are affected, it stimulates anxiety, it comes into their safe world theory, maybe violates their safe world theory, safe world theory being the ideas that they have to cling to so that they can safely operate in the world. When those things are violated on an emotional level, what happens? They dig their heels in to their bias, whether it's positive, negative, or whatever. They dig their heels into their ideas, even when you present them with evidence to the contrary. This is why you guys can't have, you know, you can't engage in healthy political discussions with most people on the internet. Why? Because you present some evidence instead of, you know, looking at that evidence and having a reasonable discussion with you, they dig heels in and they often will resort to personal attacks and it often gets very emotional. Well, this is exactly what your woman will do to you in a relationship. Okay. If you let it happen, this is what will happen. And the problem where women really screw themselves and where guys screw themselves too, um, is that guys screw themselves because they're, you're trying to be objective and you're not recognizing that there's an emotional component and that these biases exist. Okay. So that's a big way that guys screw themselves. And um, this is why we can't have nice things. Exactly. Okay. It's you're, you're thinking of you. You're not thinking of her. You're thinking of the truth. And let me be objective here. Let me, let me tell you how what you're saying is not true. You know, I mean, you try it. It's always good to try Anyway, just to reconfirm that she's not going to listen to you because she's in a negative bias, <laughs> but it's worth a try. You know, you can say, hey, I attempted it, right? And this is why when you follow my videos I've done on arguing, okay, um, there's cycles of an argument. And what you're doing is you're taking yourself out of a conversation until she becomes more emotionally stable and less negative confirmation bias in order to be able to have a conversation with you, all right? You may be wrong, let's say. That doesn't mean that, you know, and she may be wrong, whatever. Maybe you're both wrong. Usually there's a component of both in every conflict. But you can't have that conversation with somebody who is deep into their negative confirmation bias because then you're just going to be have the blame shifted to you. No personal, personal responsibility will happen for them. And you're screwed, right? You're screwed. There's nowhere you can go other than allow yourself to be devalued. Now, I gave an example of how the woman does it and how traditionally that happens. But let me tell you, you guys do this too. You do it in your own way. And I'll leave that to you to analyze how you use these biases to your disadvantage. I'll tell you one way that you do it is you, you guys will oftentimes... Maybe not you guys, but guys in red pill spaces do this. And that's they get into a negative confirmation bias about women in general. All right. You, you take these things that you might know about women, and then you look at it through the lens of a negative bias. And you have all, we have all kinds of fun sayings and things that we do to kind of more or less degrade female uh, nature and females in general so that we don't become too emotionally invested, which brings to kind of a final point is anxiety. So these negative biases, it comes from a self-defense mechanism our brain has. Okay. It's we're trying to prevent ourselves from being harmed. And so it stimulates this, what I would call no better term for it other than an anxiety. And if she gets her anxiety stimulated, she does this. If you do it, you're doing this because anxiety does not seek truth out. Anxiety is a liar. It's not truthful, but it feels true. Okay. The great, you know, deceptive force in your brain is anxiety because what happens is, is it is out to confirm itself. That's how your brain 
which is designed, your brain is designed to defend itself. Your brain is designed for survival. Your brain is not designed to find the truth. It's designed to find what's right for its own sense so you can survive and procreate. That's the design of your brain. Okay. Your human side wants to find the truth of things, but the brain is designed to keep you from harming yourself, keep you out of harm, keep, allow, allow you to survive. Right. Okay, that's what your brain's designed to do. So if you avoid women or avoid healthy relationships and stuff, then that means that you're not going to be hurt by a woman. You see what I mean? And that's the basics of it. And when she is operating on her negative biases, she is protecting herself most likely from mating with the wrong person or being with a inferior man or being with a man who is toxic or bad for her. She thinks she's protecting herself from that by confirming her negative bias with everything you do. But here's the thing. You're no different. I mean, maybe you're an improved version of yourself even, but you're not different than when she was head over heels in love with you. She's not different than when you were excited about her. The only thing that's different is you and your biases and how you see the other person. First of all is selection. Be a positive person and be with a positive person. There's ways of thinking of things, right? And we can take something and we can think excessively negative stuff and limiting ways of looking at stuff. Or we can think of ways we can use this to our advantage. And I don't mean positive thinking where you lie to yourself and, you know, hide in a corner and just give yourself affirmations that don't make any sense. All right. This isn't the, uh, the secret or whatever. Okay. We're dealing with practical stuff here, but you ask yourself when you have some thoughts about your partner, what's going on, is this useful right now? All right. Is, is what is what I'm about to say or do or my thoughts about this person? Is it real? Is it useful? All right, ask yourself that question. And, and how can I take what I think I'm seeing and what's the reality? How can I take it to have positive action to get what I want from this relationship? So that's in general, that's not even a skill. That's just something you need to, to develop as a natural thing that you do all the time, not just in your relationships, but in general. I have a negative thought or I have a positive thought, whatever. Is it useful? How can I use this to my advantage? That's positive thinking. Being a positive person. That is a prereq. If you're with a woman who is negative all the time about stuff, eventually she's going to be negative to you about stuff. And now you're going to have an uphill, uphill battle maintaining frame with that woman. And it's not going to be your skills. It's going to be your capabilities. Okay, she may not be able to do it may not be able to have a healthy relationship because she is not a positive person, all right? And it's not tested when things are good, by the way. It's tested when there's she's not getting her way. She doesn't get her way when adversity happens, when a problem arises between you two. Is she thinking in a positive way and trying to work things out in a good way with you and be supportive and loving, or is she being a complete, asshole and controlling and trying to move things in the other direction. So that's first thing. And you got to be that person too, to get that person. Second thing is, you know, being with a forgiving person, because you're going to make mistakes, you're going to screw up. And so is she, right? So you have to be a person who's capable of forgiveness. All right. This doesn't mean hurt yourself. This doesn't mean not look at things objectively. Okay, again, how can I use this? What's going on here? But if you're able to move forward in a relationship with somebody after being injured, um, just not whether you're able to, but whether it makes sense that anybody could be able to, then that means that you should be able to. And that means you work towards that and you forgive a person for the things that they may have done to you. And you work towards, you know, having a better life together. When you run into problems, that's what you do. And if she's not the person who does that, 
And if she's a person who holds grudges, tries to punish other people, so on and so forth, or if you're that person, right, then it's probably not going to work out. And so that's something you need to change in yourself. And that's some, something you need to look for when you pick somebody. And a big part of that is removing your trauma. If you got trauma and damage weighing you down, you're going to carry that into your relationships. And it's going to make it very difficult for you to forgive things that she might do and make it very difficult for you to move out of a negative confirmation bias. Third thing is to challenge yourself and your beliefs always. Do what's called a cognitive challenge, which is I take a situation, you take that negative belief or thought and you challenge it. You say, okay, you know, she did this. What's the worst case scenario with the things she just said? She's disrespectful. She's an a-hole. She doesn't see me as her best option. She's cheating on me. She's doing this. Whatever it may be, within the realm of reality, what is the worst case? And then you ask yourself, what is the best case? What is the opposite of this negative thing? What is the opposite? If, if the opposite could be true, what would that be? And what that gives you is what we call when we're at the shooting range, a left and right limit. So now you've removed the unknown. You know that the possibility of the meaning and everything behind, let's say, this perceived offense or this negative thought, you know that this is the limit it exists in. This helps to remove the anxiety that forces you to have a negative bias because anxiety is based on what's unknown. When you know the danger as well as the, the possibility right? The opposite of the danger. Now you have a left and right limit. It can't get any worse or any better than what's in this limit. So now you can work with something. And from there, that allows you to now have a, to remove just that positive or negative confirmation bias, usually negative confirmation bias, and just challenge the belief and try to look at the evidence and then say, here's where maybe I think that is. And to be comfortable also saying, but maybe I don't know. And maybe I need to observe more behavior because I really don't know. Or maybe I need to ask some questions or have a discussion and communicate with my partner. But that's going to remove that, that anxiety. And if you can do that belief challenge, which I include in the mindset course, if you haven't gotten that yet, um, that's on the website. And it's included in the mastermind program if you're in the right tier. Um, that will help you greatly. And then the last thing is to act with intention. If you want to be with this chick, act like it, all right? And start to actively move your negative thoughts into positive possibilities, not in a way to remove the idea of um, reality or objectivity, but you move it to those possibilities because you want to, you want to take what is real and when you want to have the outcome independence to say, here's where I think reality is. And then you want to ask yourself, how can I use this? What can I do about this to be with this person, to have the good, loving, happy relationship that I want? Okay, that's moving and operating with intention versus being a damn victim of your own behavior and her bullshit too. All right? And so move with intention. So if you can do those things, be a positive person and pick a positive person. Be a forgiving person and pick a forgiving person. Challenge yourselves in your beliefs always when, you, when the negative biases crop up and then act with intention. If you can do those four things, you're going to help yourself greatly. And now you are actually in charge of your damn relationship. And hopefully she can do some of these things too to be in charge of herself and her emotions towards you versus just being a victim by them right? Being a victim of them and letting attraction and then unattraction, getting together and breakups just happen due to biases and things going on and things wrong with you, right? Breakups happen. Staying together happens. Getting together happens. Having great relationships happened. Not having great relationships happen. Well, you want to do those things with your intentions. You want to be intentional. You want to see the truth, not just see things through the lens 
of your perceptions and your biases, right? Because you can be the smartest person in the world, but if you can't get rid of those biases and if you're too egotistical or arrogant to think that maybe your perceptions need to be challenged, I got news for you. You're not going to do too well.